Continuation, Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 3, page 23. Idolatry is likened to spiritual adultery by God. Marriage is between one man and one woman. The relationship between God and us is the same way born-again Christians are married to Christ, the bridegroom. We must forsake all other gods which are but demons and worship the only true God through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only way, truth and life. Nobody can come to God the Father except through Jesus Christ. Christians should not be quick to divorce, even when there has been an act of sexual immorality. We need to seek godly counsel and try to work on our marriage, like Abraham and Sarah did. God gave a bill of divorce to Israel when they were committing idolatry, and only renewed his vows with Israel when they genuinely repented and forsook their idols to only worship the Lord God in spirit and in truth. So says Jehovah, where is your mother's bill of divorce, whom I have put away? Or, to which of my creditors have I sold you? Behold, you were sold for your iniquities, and your mother is put away for your sins. Isaiah 50 verse 1 When you have committed adultery, you need to repent towards God first of all, and you also need to confess it to your spouse, because it is not just against God that you have sinned, but also against your spouse. It is good that you confess it to your pastor or elders, but if they truly obey the scriptures, they will tell you to also tell your spouse. The church will help you and support you and give you godly counsel, but you need to confess your adultery to your spouse. If your brother or sister, in this case your spouse, sins against you, even in adultery, go and tell him or her their fault between the two of you alone. If he or she hears you, you have gained your brother or sister, or even your spouse. But if he or she will not hear you, take with you one or two more spiritual people who will give you the counsel of the scriptures, so that by two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he or she refuses to hear them, tell it to the church and let the church leaders give godly counsel and spiritual counsel and support. Matthew 18 verse 15 to 17. God refused to take back Israel until they had acknowledged to him that they were wrong and genuinely repented of their spiritual adultery. Jehovah also said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree and has fornicated there. And I said after she had done all these things, Turn to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw, when for all the causes for which backsliding Israel committed adultery, I sent her away and gave a bill of divorce to her, yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she went and whored also. And it happened from the folly of her whoredom, she defiled the land and fornicated with stones and stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned to me with her whole heart, but with falsehood, says Jehovah. And Jehovah said to me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and cry these words toward the north and say, Return, O backsliding Israel, says Jehovah, and I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says Jehovah, and I will not remain angry for ever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, that you have sinned against Jehovah your God, and have scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says Jehovah. Turn, O backsliding sons, says Jehovah, for I am married to you, and I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3, verse 6 to 15. 
So you need to acknowledge to your spouse that you have sinned against her by committing adultery. Genuinely repent and forsake your lovers like backsliding believers have to do. Only then can God start working on you. In marriage, the Bible says they were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis 2 verse 25 There must be total transparency in marriage. James tells us, confess faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. James 5 verse 16 If you never told your spouse of your adultery, but you told the elder, the day your spouse discovers it, she or he will never trust you again and will be so hurt. Furthermore, when he or she discovers that the pastor knew about it and kept silent, he or she will leave that church because she or he will feel betrayed by the church. We confess our fault to one another. That is when the healing of the brokenheartedness starts. For Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Luke 4 verse 18 And we pray that God will heal our wounds and give us the grace to forgive and work out that marriage in the name of Jesus. But if the spouse that is living in adultery does not want to repent nor send the lover away, the other spouse needs to pray, and if she or he cannot take it any more, he or she can divorce. By so doing, he or she is not sinning against God. Now, if you catch your spouse sleeping with your goat or dog or any animal, please report it to the church leader immediately. Let them minister deliverance to him or her. If he or she genuinely repents and forsakes that bestiality, you can consider working on that marriage with the help of the church leaders. If your spouse is in a homosexual relationship, you need to seek help from the church leadership so that they will confront him or her according to the written word of God. And if he or she does not repent and forsake his or her ways, you are free to divorce. Trust me, I know some women where their husband, after more than ten years of marriage, became homosexual. We counseled the sister and prayed, but the man did not repent nor forsake his wicked ways, so the sister went ahead and divorced. She is free to remarry only a born-again Christian, according to the scriptures. If the man goes ahead and does a sex change to become a woman, or the woman does a sex change to become a man, the other spouse is free to divorce. If, for instance, you find your spouse to be a paedophile and an incestuous person, you need to confront him or her and report it to the church, and in case of paedophilia, you need to call the police immediately to get your spouse arrested. Any man of God or woman of God who has knowledge of a case of paedophilia happening in a family must report it to the police immediately. You pray for God to have mercy on the person involved in paedophilia, but have him first arrested by the authorities. There was a case recently in the news of a Pentecostal bishop in the United Kingdom who used to rape underage girls among his church members. This was known by many people, but there was a silence over the matter. The bishop had retired and some of the church members, who were his victims, reported to the police what happened to them when they were much younger. And even the granddaughter of the bishop was also raped by her grandfather, the bishop. The bishop was too old to go to prison. If you are a wife of such a minister of the gospel, that man is from the devil, not from God. Report him to the police and save the lives of your own daughters and granddaughters that are being raped by him. I have a sister who was working with me in Manchester. She was Catholic. Her parents were Catholics too. From the age of five years old to the age of 14 years old, her father was abusing her sexually and her mother knew what was going on. Her mother never reported it to the police and her mother forbade her to tell anybody outside. 
She was more concerned about what people would think of them than protecting her children. At the age of 14, she started threatening her father that if he touched her again, she would tell the social services and the police. So, her father did not touch her sexually anymore, but started beating her up so that she would keep quiet. At the age of 16 years old, she had had enough of the beating and she ran away from her parents' house. Today she is in her fifties, and that is when she shared what happened to her in her father's house. Her father has already died, but her mother was angry at her, for she wanted to take the secret with her to the grave. Her mother died in 2015. Today that dear sister is helping other young women who were raped or abused sexually by their parents. Religion is of the devil. I curse religion. These things do not happen just among Catholics. I have given you the example of the bishop of a Pentecostal church in the United Kingdom as well. We need to protect our children from wicked men and women. A sister in Warrington reported to me a case of a man who was jailed for sexual abuses on his little daughter. The wife divorced him, but when he came out of jail the church leaders told the woman she must go back to him and remarry him. It is not for the church to tell people whom to marry. The sister divorced him for sexual immorality, even paedophilia and incest. She is free to marry whosoever she wants, and yes, she must forgive her husband, for God commanded us to forgive. But forgiveness does not automatically mean that they have to be remarried. He, first of all, must be born again and bear fruit befitting repentance and it is the choice of the woman if she wants to get back with him or not. We need to know the heart of God and be shepherds after God's heart. Jesus says again, I say unto you that whosoever shall put away or divorce his wife, for every cause we should add, for that was what those Pharisees asked Jesus when tempting him in Matthew 19 verse 3 saving or except for the cause of fornication or sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery matthew 5 verse 32 so we have put that in context the reason god allowed divorce initially was for sexual immoralities. But people did not only stick to that, they started making all kinds of excuses to divorce their wife or husband. Spiritually, the blood covenant of marriage was not broken, for there had been no sexual immorality, yet these men or women still wanted to divorce. What was in their heart was already adultery, like Jesus says. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, You shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew 5 verse 27 to 28 these men or women who want to divorce, though there has been no sexual immorality, are already adulterers and adulteresses at heart. They have already been eyeing another man or woman and have been chatting with him or her. They think that the grass is green over there, but that is just a lie from the pit of hell. So the reason why they are committing adultery when they remarry another person is because the spiritual blood covenant of marriage was not broken, for there has been no sexual immorality. Thus they are sinning against God by so doing. So let us cast blame appropriately, for when we read Matthew 5.28, it seems like Jesus is blaming the two of them. We know already the heart of God by now that the person who is sinning is the one who decided to divorce, though there was no sexual immorality. Paul tells us, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 15 we must see proof that you both have tried to work on that marriage. 
Paul is saying the unbelieving, not necessarily the unbeliever. It means a person does not believe and obey the written word of God. Jesus himself tells us of foolish believers who hear the word of God but neither obey it nor act upon it. He says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. You see, the two houses underwent the same things. The difference was one acted upon what he heard from the Holy Scriptures, and the other rejected what he heard from the Holy Scriptures. And that is the reason why born-again Christians divorce. God says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me. Seeing you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Hosea 4 verse 6 Nowadays, Christians deliberately reject the knowledge of the Word of God to act according to the dictate of their imagination and of their wicked heart. Many believers made Jesus their Saviour, but not their Lord. For, had He been our Lord, we would obey the counsel of His written Word and not merely call Him Lord, Lord, and turn around to act contrary to his holy scriptures, Luke 6 verse 46. So, if we are always bound to our spouse spiritually, when there has been no sexual immoralities, when we go and marry someone else, we are actually committing adultery according to the law. Why then did Moses, being well aware of this, permit the people to divorce and remarry, even when there had not been sexual immoralities. For Moses said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. In other words, she may remarry. And if the latter husband hates her and writes her a bill of divorcement and gives it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies, who took her to be his wife, her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife. After that she is defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord. But she is free to remarry. And you shall not cause the land to sin, which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance. Deuteronomy 24 verse 1 to 4 Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away in Deuteronomy 24 1 to 4? Jesus answered to the Pharisees and to us today, saying, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered or allowed you to put away or divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. For in the beginning, in Genesis 2.24, God said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. The ideal of God is that they should be together until death do them part. Matthew 19, verse 7 to 8. Mark puts it nicely, saying, Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept of divorce, though there is no sexual immorality. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Mark 10 verse 5 to 9. So again I say, when there has not been any sexual immorality and a person decides to divorce, the one who has decided to divorce, instead of working on the marriage, is the one committing adultery. For when people read what Matthew wrote down, saying, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away or divorce his wife, for every cause, we should add, for that was what those Pharisees asked Jesus when tempting him in Matthew 19 verse 3, saving or except in the case of fornication or sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, commits adultery. Matthew 5 verse 32. The people who do not know the heart of God will think that God is blaming the two of them equally. God is a just God. He saw who wanted to end that marriage, though there was no sexual immorality, and who was trying to work on that marriage, and was opposed to divorce. Therefore, Mark writes for us the clarification of Jesus, on whom to blame and who is committing adultery against the other spouse, in the eyes of God by divorcing, when there's been no sexual immorality. You see, Sometimes when you teach, you think all the students or the disciples have the same understanding, but you will soon realize that it is not the case, for many do not yet know the heart of God, nor His ways, so you will have to break it down for them. Sometimes when some of my ministers or my disciples ask me questions, I wonder within myself like Jesus did, are you not a teacher of the gospel, and yet you do not know these simple things? John 3 verse 10. Not that I belittle them and the revelation of the word of God they have, but like Jesus I see the need to disciple people so that they will pass on the correct teaching. I no longer assume that people know the simple truth of the word. I explain everything in detail now, so that nobody is left behind, but I carry everybody along in the teaching. That was what Jesus was doing with his disciples. Many times he had to explain again, with more accuracy to his disciples in the house, what he meant. We have already taken the example of being poor and being poor in spirit of Luke 6.20 and Matthew 5 verse 3. Poverty is part of the curse of the law. Please read the Bible study on biblical prosperity. So we know that Jesus was not talking about being physically poor, but being poor in spirit. And in another instance, Jesus said in public to his disciples, after that young rich man refused to follow Jesus, because he did not want to part with his earthly possession. Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Matthew 19, verse 23 to 26. People, even ministers of the gospel who hear such sayings of Jesus, but do not know the heart of God, would think that God has a problem with riches and rich people. That is far from the truth. Abraham was very rich in Genesis 13. Isaac prospered so much that even the king Abimelech was afraid of him in Genesis 26. So Jesus, when he realized that people might have misunderstood what he said because they did not know the heart of God or the ways of God, he clarified things. Mark, the disciple of Peter, wrote for us the clarification that Jesus gave which Matthew did not write down. How hard it is for those that have riches to enter into the kingdom of God.
and the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Mark 10 verse 23 to 25 So we have our clarification. God has no problem with riches, but with people trusting in their riches instead of trusting in the Lord God through Christ Jesus. That is what Paul also understood and asked Timothy to tell rich believers to trust in God instead of trusting in their earthly riches. He says to us, Charge those who are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. 1 Timothy 6, 17-19 God is the one who gave us those riches so that we can enjoy them. So let us trust in God, not in the riches. For the riches are not our source of joy, but God is our source of joy. We are making disciples, so I need to teach you how to study and rightly divide the word of truth and teach the same thing to your disciples. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Let us now see the clarification Jesus gave on who is committing adultery against the other spouse when there has not been any sexual immorality. To be continued